Metametrics is a psychometric research firm. Uh, we're really dedicated to assessment and, and making assessments more meaningful. Uh, we're a little bit unusual in that a lot of psychometric firms uh, really believe in a lot of testing. Uh, we're not that kind of firm. We believe this country, we do enough testing. What we need to do more with are the tests we give. We need tests that are actionable, tests that can inform instruction. And so really our mission in life is to build assessments and metrics that publishers like Scholastic can use to help inform instruction and help support instruction. The Quantile Framework um, is a tool, a uh, resource, that uh, you can think about it from two perspectives. You can bifurcate and think of on one perspective measurement of people. Uh, for years uh, in our testing industry, we've, we've been able to test students and order them from the low to high. Uh, you can think about that as a norm reference test. Uh, for example, um, I may be at the 95th percentile rank, you may be at the 99th percentile rank, so we can rank order students. And for years we've been able to know that you could rank order the difficulty of material. And what the Quantile Framework does that is unique, it puts both the mathematician, the student, and the task on the same scale, thereby supporting differentiated instruction. If all you can do is order students, but the tasks are not ordered, then you, you really can't support differentiated instruction. And the Quantile Framework, in its essence, helps teachers support differentiated instruction because there's so much heterogeneity in a classroom. Te teachers respond to this each and every day. Whether you're a third grade teacher, an eighth grade teacher, just a tremendous amount of range of students. And so what we've tried to do is help uh, Scholastic and others to build tools that allow uh, teachers to, to support differentiated instruction. What is unique about the Quantile Framework is at its essence is simply this. It's putting the student and the math task on the same scale. That is truly unique. Uh, other scales do not do that. Uh, you may have a scale that reports out a grade equivalent. Uh, you may have a scale that rank orders the difficulty of task, but putting them on the same measure is, is what is unique about the Quantile Framework, and that's why teachers really resonate to it, and students understand it, parents understand it, but again, because it's putting everything on a common scale. I think in education for too long, uh, we've had too many different metrics out there, and that's part of the confusion. Uh, when teachers have to respond to all these different tests and they're not exchangeable, then there's a lot of uh, added cost to the teaching profession and they chase different things. And if we can uh, have uniform scales uh, that uh, publishers uh, link to, uh, then you'll have much uh, more efficient classrooms. Since we developed the Lexal Framework and the Quantile Framework, a question we often receive is, what's the same about the Lexal Framework to the Quantile Framework and what's different? And there are a lot of similarities. First of all, it's built up upon the same psychometric model. That is, uh, the Lexal Framework and the Quantile Framework on the same model. The second uh, common feature is they're both vertical scales. Um, Lexiles are vertical scale and Quantiles are vertical scale. And that's important for a couple of reasons. Students want to see growth. Parents want to see growth. Teachers want to see growth. And often, historically, our measurement systems have not allowed us to measure growth. Uh, there is a big psychometric term for this. It's called monotonicity. What it means is going upness. Can you see that things are going up? But if you want to impress your friends, you could say, uh, does it have the monotonicity feature? Uh, uh, and what, uh, in fact, one uh, Fortune 500 company has hired an anthropologist to study adolescents and uh, to see what motivates them. And one of the things that she discovered uh, was that it's actually the measurement of growth uh, is what motivates, in particular, adolescent boys. It's not so important where they are today in terms of their status, but can they see that they're growing over time? And one of the things that the scholastic math inventory will allow you to do and allow the student to see is that growth over time. And that's one of the, uh, the real benefits of the quantile scale. And so with a vertical scale, and you can think about a vertical scale like a yardstick, uh, you can go measure your height, uh, and each year you can see how you're growing. Well, the same thing with the Quantile and the Lexile Framework. It's a vertical scale, so you can see your growth. Third similarity would be that uh, Lexiles and Quantiles both measure the reader and the, uh, the difficulty of the task. In the case of the Lexile Framework, it's books. How difficult is this book to read? 
in the case of the quantile framework, it's how difficult is this mathematical problem. So it's a, and that's also how they're somewhat different. With Alexol, you connect to a book. To a quantile score, you connect to a set of questions. Not a book, but a set of questions. So it's task specific, whereas the Lexile is book specific. Um, it's also used for high stakes assessment, uh, which you have a number of states, uh, about 25 states uh, in, the, in the country now report out Lexiles on their NCLB, uh, No Child Left Behind Summative Assessment. Uh, five states report out quantiles on their high stakes assessment. And then what we're trying to do, and again with, the, with Scholastic, is being able to connect those day-to-day -day moments to the year-to-year -year high stakes uh, tests that are given. Um, one of the things that um, is important uh, in our country, um, and we, we make such huge decisions on high stakes tests. Uh, we make decisions whether a student's going to graduate. We make uh, decisions about whether school's meeting AYP. And all the professional organizations from the American Psychological Association to the American Educational Research Association to the National Council of Measurement and Education have all opined that we should not be making decisions on one administration of a single test. But that's, in essence, what we do. If we have formative assessments, they're on that same scale, then you can take that data from those formative assessments plus the summative assessment and really feel like you have a more um, informed decision about whether that student or that school or that teacher is doing a good job.